Hello, Paul Hamilton here. Um, so tutorial, how are we going to make this consonant cube or dice that we can actually have a little bit of a play with? Um, really easy to make in Reality Composer. Um, so should we get started? Let's get started. So we're going to open up Reality Composer. Just go back for a second and I'll jump back into that one. Uh, let's go with a, just a, a normal horizontal anchor. And what we'll do is we'll just tap on each of these cubes and delete, just so we've got a clean uh, blank canvas to start with. Um, and one of the things that we'll do at the start, see how we've got the collides at the start in the environment? We'll switch that over to rubber because we want a little bit of bounce in our dice. Um, we can play around with the gravity and so forth, but we'll just leave that as it is at the moment. Now, the trick to this is when we bring in our cube, which we probably could have used our other one there, I'll just scale that up a little bit so you can see. Uh, we might leave it, uh, let, let's turn it to that rubber. So we've got kind of a rubbery kind of dice feel about it. Um, so the trick to this is quite simply being able to place the letters on each of the sides, um, the faces of the dice itself. So that's basically the trick to it. Everything else is relatively basic. So I'm just going to kind of um, elevate this a little bit here and let's bring in some text. Now I won't go through the whole thing because you'll get bored with it, but I'll give you a few little tips along the way. So when we do our text here, we obviously, uh, we could increase the front font size a little bit if we needed to. Um, and down the bottom here, we've got some different things here. I might make this like a plastic feel. And let's start with a consonant blend of, I don't know, BL. So that's basically it. But what the trick is and what the little kind of fiddly bit is, is we need to rotate around here and just get the actual kind of element. And you'll see that if I've got my snapping on up at the top here, see my snapping, uh, the little magnets, it makes it a lot easier to get that kind of, you'll see that it kind of just kind of, see how it kind of places itself. So when I turn around, I can see that that's kind of a good size. Now I can tap on that if I want to, um, and I can play around with backgrounds and the different text colors and different things if I'd like to, or even the fonts. Um, but basically that's it. Um, a little tip from me, um, when you actually tap on that, um, duplicate a few. So I'm going to duplicate a few of these just going along. You can see, and the reason for that is once you get your font and your color and everything right, then you can just kind of go to those other ones and actually change the letters. So that might be a CR blend. And you can see here that I've actually moved them around. Now the trick to this is obviously we just want the one object. Um, so when you actually say, I'm going to move this up the top, start playing around with the different letters. I'm going to rotate this round, or maybe I need to rotate this uh, this way to get that nice and flat on the ground and raise um, over. I think the skill with this is just making sure that you're comfortable moving around this kind of reality composer, because you find that that's actually not on it. That's looking pretty good, and I'll just shift that way. It's really important to be able to kind of go through the different elements might make that F, L as a consonant blend. And you can see that's starting to look really, really good in regard to it. Now, if we raise this and drop it, um, we're gonna have some issues obviously because the letters are gonna stay there and that sort of thing. So we need to group them and it's really easy to group. You basically touch your letter, hold your finger down and then touch the cube itself. Now, if I touch the cube now, it'll give me that option of group. And you can see there that if I actually raise that, uh, let's raise this bit. You'll see that the F, L hasn't been grouped yet. So that's just a great way of kind of going around and actually doing it. The other thing you want to do is when you finish um, and you're actually doing your, uh, your finished cube, um, you want to turn on your physics, obviously. You want to turn your material to rubber and just leave your collision shape on there as well. Um, so basically, you've got rubber on rubber and you can start to alter the different things here. So if I go back to my other, my previous finished one, and I have a little bit of a look at the top here, you'll see here when I actually drop it, it kind of moves a fair bit because I've got the rubber on rubber um, aspect of it. So it's going to flick around a fair bit and you can certainly alter that. So you might say, I, okay, I don't want that. I actually want kind of a lead feeling on the bottom. So if I do it this time, you'll see the difference in it. See how it just stops basically. You don't want that. You obviously want to, um, let's see what plastic kind of looks like. That's once again, not so great. And then if we put rubber, we actually kind of can see that down the bottom. So that's, that's the ground. 
that's the top bit there. I've got lead, it's kind of moved over to lead. If I make that rubber now, that should give me a better feel. Yep, that's a little bit better. Sometimes it defaults back when we're actually changing too much. And certainly you can kind of rotate that a little bit. If you want some kind of random results, you just rotate uh, by a different, I might rotate it this way, and you're gonna get different results, obviously, from what you've kind of had at the start. Um, so that's an FR kind of result. So I hope you found that really useful. Um, so easy to use. I'm going working on at the moment um, some narratives or story dice um, that have different kind of uh, stimulus symbols on it so kids can actually get creative writing. Um, but I hope you found that useful. Paul Hamilton here, logging off.